Hey everybody, welcome back. This is HD and it's time for another HD broadcast today. I'm going to be uh, casting a game that just came out on Battle.net. This just came out on a popular replay website that I do use. And uh, it is going to be between TT1 and this Korean guy right here. Don't really know who he is. His name just something starts like ST underscore July, who uh, also used to play Brood War, known as uh, his other handle, July Zerg. And uh, yeah, both these players just kind of having a little bit of a chat right here, and uh, our Blue Zerg player just confirming that he is July. And I don't believe he's, he is an imposter, I do believe he is the real deal, and I am so excited to be casting this game because I don't think I've ever casted a replay of July Zerg. Maybe one, maybe two, I don't think I have. Sal Sal here just saying a little bit of uh, early greetings, respect by both these players. And um, I'm excited. July Zerk is seriously one of my all-time childhood favorites. You know how all the kids back then, they always loved the... I guess that you guys would be fans of... Uh, if you were my age, you would have been fans of Power Rangers or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or maybe Pokemon. I was a fan of July Zerk. I was a fan of July Zerk. I was a fan of Jadong. All the, 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 the top StarCraft II players, namely Zerg, because I, I've always been a Zerg player at heart. And... Um, I'm so excited to be casting this game, guys. July Zerg in StarCraft 2 is known for his aggressive playstyle. He is one of the most aggressive Zergs in the world. One of the guys who really sets the bar, sets the tone for all the aspiring Zergs out there who want to play a more aggressive game. They don't want to sit back and just macro, and um, they want to bring it to your opponent's face. They thrive on pressuring your uh, pressuring the opponent, and July Zerg is really kind of the role model for that. He is extremely good at what he does. Uh, he's been like that in StarCraft 1. He was called the God of War. He's still called the God of War in StarCraft 2. He loves his burgers and uh, <laughs> he is one of my all-time favorites. I can't wait to see how this game is going to play out. Once again, this is a best of one. Just came out on Battle.net. Not to take anything away from TT1, he is one of the best players, one of the best Protoss players that I have seen. Um, and I've had the pleasure of meeting him quite a few times. And if you guys remember, I, I, I've casted a couple of very epic replays with TT1. Uh, he's always never, he's never ceased to amaze me, this guy. Um, he, he is able to, to cook up the cheese uh, on the burner and, and just serve it on a dish. Grilled cheese, if you if you please. And uh, he, he really is a, quite a creative and innovative player himself. It looks like he's going to try to block the hatchery here, but with four Zerkings out, the good old uh, 20 hatch after pool and gas, I think that that probe will not be able to block it, and it's going to be pushed away most likely gonna go down by the Zergling who is giving chase right here and uh, July Zerg doesn't look like he's gonna be aggressive this game uh, obviously on this map Zelnaga Caverns uh, you th there are routes to attack the Protoss at the natural but it's not like a map that you can really be uber aggressive on unless you try to force it down your opponent's throat we'll see what July Zerg does he's always he's always creative he, he always has strategies that he can uh, think of on the fly and you know he might he might try to do some kind of an early zergling bust with banelings or something like that. Um, I I, re I recall seeing a game in in the GSL where Jelizer just constantly used baneling busts. He was like, you know what? I'm just gonna baneling bust every single game in a series, and he actually won. So <laughs> um, it just goes to show, you know, all you all you noobs out there who are like, oh my god, QQ baneling bust, it's still a viable strat, and even the pros do it. So. Even I do it from time to time. Uh, <laughs> so we'll see what happens. TT1 here is very, uh, very much walled off right now. He is chrono boosting his warp gate out, and he has three gateways up right now. Presumably going to be going for a three gate into expansion because he already has a ton of sentries out. And doing a quick zap de dap on the Overlord here. J July Zerk here is just going to lumber in with the Overlord just to see what. Uh, TT1 is doing, and TT1's probe actually gets denied from throwing down the pylon. A lot of times Protoss players will throw out the pylon right here at the ramp before they grab their expansion, um, but the probe was actually denied, so the pylon's a little bit delayed, now warping it in the back. More sentries coming out though, and I think that is going to secure the Nexus for our Protoss player. Um, <clears throat> July Zerg, meanwhile, he is going to be going for Lair, and he does have a Roach Warren coming up as well, so... Um, you know, one thing I've noticed in Zerg versus Protoss as of late, and this has kind of been a metagame shift, is a lot of Zerg players now will opt to use Banelings in ZVP. Um, and the reason for that is because Baneling dropping on sentries 
banelings against sentries in general, uh, especially since the Protoss ball really likes to ball up and make sentries, zealots, and even stalkers very vulnerable to banelings. Uh, and banelings have become quite a popular mechanic and tool that Zerg players have now started to, to use in ZVP. Uh, roaches are still used very much, but they have fallen a little bit out of favor. Um, but they're still, they're still a very staple unit in Zerg versus Protoss, but now they're really mixed in with banelings as well. So that's one thing I've noticed in ZVP play. We'll see if July Zerg opts to do that this game or not. Um, for now, it looks like he's just going Speedling Roaches. He has five Roaches on the way, and he has quite a bit of uh, Zerglings on the field as well. But with TT1's amount of Stalkers and Sentries, I don't think... Uh, July Zerg's gonna be able to bust that, although he is making 12 Zerglings right now, and he's making, uh, he's researching the speed upgrade for his Roaches, so we may yet see some really aggressive play from July Zerg. It's always possible that he'll try to just, you know, he'll just decide to bum rush this front door and attack it with everything he's got. You guys can see TT1 is playing very conservative right now. He hasn't really ever pushed out. He's making all of his buildings in that nice little Tetris style to prevent units from flooding into his base. And he's genuinely playing conservatively because he knows this is July Zerg. And he's not gonna try anything, anything gimmicky. He's gonna stick to his playbook. Uh, and he's going to play a very standard game. He wants to be conservative and he wants to be safe. Here comes July Zerg though. He has about 14, 15 Zerglings out here. It looks like he's going to try to go in through the back door. No, he's going to split a couple Zerglings apart and maybe only send a couple in for scouting purposes. At the same time, um, TT1 also scouting around the other side of the map. Zergling gets picked off though. Doesn't do any damage. And this probe will actually get to see the hatchery being built up here at the inside location. So, I think right now both these players are really gearing up for a macro game. I don't think we're going to be seeing any uber crazy aggression. I think both of them are content to play a long term style kind of game. And you guys can see, uh, wow, we actually have Hydralis upgrade going down for the Hydras. Uh, Hydras really have not... They, I feel like they've been really underrepresented in StarCraft 2. And I don't know if you guys out there agree with me. Give me like a woo you know, in the comments down below. Um, if you guys believe that uh, Hydras are really are underrepresented in StarCraft 2, they, really, they don't really seem to have this a place. They're, they're kind of good against Protoss as long as the Protoss doesn't go Colossus or Mass Zealots, I guess you could say. But almost every Protoss does go Colossus. Um, so I, I, I don't know. They're, not, they're really not used all that well. We'll see if Julizer can make some good use out of them. Right now, thankfully, TT1 doesn't have robotic support base, so he doesn't have Colossus. Um, and... Actually, July's are moving in there with the Overseer, I guess, realize, hey, a lot of gateways, no robotic support bay, at least not yet. It's going up right now. I'm going to make Hydras. So he's made 12 Hydras right now, which um, is actually quite a bit. So we're actually going to have a pretty large combination of Speedlings, Roaches, Hydras, and even a Spire going down as well. So July Zerg is just reaching out into every possible tech tree. He's going to try to really have a nice, well-composed army, and that's another thing that July Zerg does very well. Hold that thought, though. We may have an engagement here. Uh, the one thing about Hydras, though, is once they're off the creep, they are slow as snails. And uh, I think July Zerg realizing that they are extremely vulnerable, though, um, I think he just doesn't care. He's going to actually go for the Nexus. Nexus midway warping in is going to get killed off. No cancel by TT1. TT1 losing the Nexus. I'm pretty sure he didn't cancel that in time. Uh, and TT1 losing that Nexus there, taking a bit of a hit, and July Zerg just doing a really nice hit and run there. Drive-by shooting, and runs away, and um, his Hydralis are able to get out of the way quickly enough to where they are not vulnerable, and they cannot be exploited by the, uh, the, the issue of speed. Um, and thankfully, because July Zerg has decent creep spread, I'd say if anything, that would be July Zerg's fault this game. He actually doesn't have the best creep spread, really. Um, and maybe that's because he just doesn't have enough queens. Let's see how many queens he's got. He's got three queens only, so one at each hatchery, and no queen dedicated to, to pooping out that creep. So that could be July Zerg's undoing. Creep is really important in, uh, in a high-level game of StarCraft 2. It gives you vision, gives you speed, especially if you're going for Hydras. Um, July Zerg, though, coming in here and contaminates the uh, robotics facility right before a Colossus was able to pop out. This is going to delay those Colossus by 30 seconds. Really helpful. And on the production tab, we do have 10 Mutalisks on the way for July Zerg. So July Zerg is going to be going into Mutalisk, guys. And he's getting Zerg Flyer attacks as well. I think it's just... 
I think he's just using this ground army to delay until he gets his mutas out. And uh, now that his mutalisks are out, he is also throwing down a Banelings nest as well. Really uh, going for every single possible unit here. And we'll see how TT1 copes with that. Here comes the mutalisk, guys. About... Four, eight, ten Mutalists coming right now with four more on the production tab. Mutalists here are not going to be able to catch those probes in transition, but they will be able to go for the probes in the main if they please right before the photon cannons go up. So TT1's timing here a little bit late, and as a result, a lot of probes could go down. Let's keep an eye on that workers' kill tab. Currently at 12 workers killed, 15 workers killed, 17 workers killed by those Mutalists, and majority of that being done by the Mutas. Um, keep in mind this entire game, really no probe harass whatsoever. July Zerg there doing a beautiful harass, dropping the Protoss player to 56 Harvesters, and now he is mobilizing his main ground army into the third Nexus here, and if he hits this and he's able to snipe it off, TT1 is going to be in a lot of trouble. Meadle is here coming in from the right side, going to be able to pick off a Colossus and delay the ground army from helping the Nexus, and as a result, the Speedlings by themselves pick off the Nexus and all the probes as well. July Zerg doing a great two-pronged attack right there and is now gonna pull back once again, a beautiful example of the hit and run. Now it's 33 harvesters under 73 and 200 supply over 130 with 40 workers killed. Good gracious, oh my God. Uh, July Zerk here is taking TT1 to school. Now, remember, the one thing about Protoss players is when they have this big ball of units, it can be very devastating. So July Zerk is falling back. He's playing it safe. He's bringing all of his units back. Uh, he may want to think about pulling those Meatless back too, but I guess he's just content to hit the, the robotic support bay and the robotics facilities. But uh, here we go. July Zerk may actually have to sacrifice this hatchery. And here's the thing about Gorn Hydras, man. They, they are just so bad against Colossus. Um, thankfully, there's only two to deal with, so we'll see if uh, we'll see if July Zerg is going to be able to to take out that that main army with his Hydra composition along with Ling's Roaches and Mutas. But it's going to be pretty difficult. Uh, he does have a lot of Banelings, guys, and those Banelings could spell disaster if they're able to land right into the ball, into that Protoss ball. Unfortunately, July Zerg does not have Overlord drop, and Overlord drop right now would be so huge. He could just drop them right into these, uh, these this Protoss ball because, of course, now with the Force Fields, the Banelings cannot get in, and the Force Fields basically making a wall, preventing any of the ground units from hitting and preventing those Banelings from coming in. July Zerg here in a little bit of trouble. I don't know if he can continue this attack, but he is going to roll in anyways, doing some damage. Um, but actually not getting the best of that exchange and now TT1 with that desperate push showing the might of the Protoss ball uh, is now actually ahead in this game, has 130 supply over 100, is actually going to take out yet another hatchery of July Zerg here. July Zerg losing countless drones, now down to only 53 and has lost two hatcheries as well. Not a good situation for our Zerg player. Um, July Zerg here has more Banelings once again but now it is two base to two base. And July Zerg in a bit of a spot here. I don't know. He needs to surround this ball and take out those Colossus. But those force fields, once again, just doing so much good for the Protoss Slayer. Just preventing those Banelings from getting in and also preventing the Roaches from hitting their marks. Uh, it just makes it so difficult for Zerg players. And TT1, once again, gets the best of that exchange. And he's going to be happy to just fall back and recuperate his army. Uh, keep, in mind, keep in mind right now, two base to two base. Actually, only one mining base against one mining base. That is going to favor our Protoss player um, for for a little bit. Uh, right now, July's are actually trying to check to see if the third Nexus was up, but no Nexus up there at the third location, so he's just going to immediately fall back. But eventually, TT1 is going to have to grab a new Nexus somewhere. July's are also grabbing the gold. Um, and now making six Corruptors. I like that. Those Corruptors are going to be very handy against the Colossus um, without Corruptor support. Uh, those Colossus, that, that number is going to become unmanageable. It's only three right now, but uh, once it gets up to a really high number, almost nothing can stop that amount of Colossus. So it's wise of July Zerg right now to make those Corruptors as quickly as possible. And he does have about six out on the map right now. Unfortunately, he still doesn't have Overlord Drop, and I really feel like if he could get those upgrades, and the, the thing here is it's so expensive, 100 gas, 100 minerals, 200 gas, 200 minerals, it is really quite a bit of an investment, but if he could get Overlord Drop, he could easily bypass the force fields and get right into that Protoss Ball and just poop, uh, drop Banelings down, and that could do so much damage. Now, the thing for TT1 here is, if you're a TT1 fan, 
or a Protoss fan, all you have to do is just hang on. Just strap your buckle, uh, make sure it's 10 notches down and is really clasping your waist and just hold on tight. Prevent the next attack, keep on to your third nexus, and you're going to be in a great spot. And that's exactly what TT1's doing right now. Laying down the Guardian Shield to reduce the damage from the Hydras just a little bit. Um, and here comes the Corruptor. is actually going to focus these Colossus down. And that's exactly what TT1 needs to do. He's actually going to sacrifice some of his ground forces here so that he can pick off all these Colossus. I think that's a good idea um, because these Colossus really are the main threat. And he is going to kill off every last Colossus. Good play by TT1. Now he just needs to fall back and remuster an army that can deal with this. Um, and that's exactly what he's going to do, I think. Going to fall back with his roaches, pulling them all back at the, at the right time. And uh, he does have a lot of roaches coming out as well. So July Zerg is actually still in this game, guys. This is a very, very close one. Uh, and it's kind of tough for me to tell who's ahead right now because... It's 130 supply to 122. Both players have killed enormously large globs of workers. Uh, the Harvester tab is pretty much even, and it's one base to one base, or two base to two base, however you guys see it. Um, July Zerk here coming in here with the Roaches, gonna try to do some damage. Force Fields here actually preventing TT1 from defending his natural expansion. Corruptors here just gonna take do a flyby, but nothing to really hit. And July Zerg still in this attack. I think he needs to fall back. These force fields, though, really preventing TT1 from defending, and eventually the force fields um, fade away, and Jalizerg is going to fall back and rebuild. And he's making purely roaches and hydras right now. I like that strategy. There are no colossus on the map right now. All really, if Jalizerg just had a large army of hydras, he could pick this army apart pretty easily. Uh, the reason why I say that is, is because there is kind of Immortal Heavy with three Immortals. Um, we'll see how it goes. July Zerg here may want to wait for his eight Hydras to pop out before he engages. Once again, Force Heal is just spelling disastrous for July Zerg, and July Zerg cannot get a good Concave down. Finally, the Hydra list will arrive. Is it going to be enough? There are quite a bit of Immortals in the back here along with Stalkers, and I think July Zerg here could be in a bit of trouble. July Zerg is possibly going to lose this game to TT1, making that desperate push really count. Has re up a sizable arm me and July Zerg here gonna get, get, get crushed. July Zerg is gonna get GG'd out and wow what a game. What a close one right there by both these players and I thought for a moment July Zerg had the game in the bag. TT1 showing uh, a, a no, no surrender policy and said uh, I'm not giving up and he actually ended up taking a victory on this exhibition game on Battle.net so congratulations TT1 really really well played. I applaud you. July Zerg is not an easy opponent to take down. Um, and a really well played game by July Zerg as well. So my hero goes down in flames, but that's okay. I'm still a July fanboy. Um, <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this game. This is once again another exhibition broadcast, and we're going to have more coming out. So thanks, guys. Stay tuned. HD signing out.